Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh One, and you were watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about the Imperial Knights of Warhammer 40K as we get into the Equestus Acastus Knight Porphyrion. Hopefully I pronounced that right. If I didn't, please comment down below. Uh, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40K videos every 12 hours now. Uh, so we have... Um, really done our best to give you as much content as we can so please subscribe and share these videos with your friends and if you have any suggestions just comment down below with that said let's get into 40 facts on the acastus knight porphyrion the acastus knight porphyrion is one of the most heavily armed and armored chassis of imperial knights ever produced by imperial technology a design that essentially sacrifices the mobility valued by most knights for greater firepower the development of the Acastus Knight chassis is lost to time, and even at the height of the ancient Mechanicum's power, the design was incredibly rare. Even the greatest and most powerful knight households, such as House Raven and House Vimar, could only field a handful of them. The rarity of the Acastus Knights meant that they were venerated as symbols of favor by the lords of the cult Mechanicus and the physical incarnation of the machine god's power. Only the great god engines of the Collegia Titanica, the mighty titans, are held in higher esteems by the servants of the Omnissiah. To the wider Mechanica, the Acestus Knights represent both battlefield supremacy weapons and physical icons of the machine god's divinity, a symbol of control and lethal sanction. The Porphyrion variant of the Knight Acastus is usually seen as the ultimate enforcer of the Knight household's rule and dominion over its scions. Many of the pilots of these Acastus Knights Porphyrion bore a unique distinction and displayed the heretical shrouded urn, a dread charge only given to those knights who have destroyed one of their brothers in sanction and ritual trial by combat. As kinslayers, many of those who bore the shrouded urn were shunned by their fellow knights and as a result, some of the scions of the knight households began to regard the Acestus knights with considerable misgivings because of their dark reputation. Although its power is undeniable, this class of titan is generally held in lesser regard than other patterns of knights. This may be well because of the Porphyrion's focus on ranged weaponry and its lack of close combat abilities, which do not allow it to enter melee combat where the greatest battle honors of knights can be won. For others, the bulk and scale of the Acastus pattern armor, which almost rivals that of a Warhound class titan, reaches the very limits of what a single mind, however well trained, may control. Therefore mastering and piloting an Acastus Knight Porphyrion puts the Scion's mind under phenomenal stress, a strain only the strongest and most ruthless knights may bear. As illustrated by the events surrounding the Donatus Uprising and the fate of Lord House Wyvorn, even well-prepared nobles do not always possess the required strength of mind to master the Acastus Knight's immense power and emerged unscathed from their physical bonding with such a powerful engine of destruction. Because this is one of the most heavily armed and armored of all the Knight's chassis in service, the Acastus Knight Porphyrion rivals even the Scout Titans of the Legal Titanicus in terms of size and power. Armed with weapons that can obliterate even the most heavily armored target, it is truly a force to be reckoned with. Taller than even the towering Serastus Knights, the Acastus Knights Porphyrion is a dominating presence on the battlefield. The Knights' main weapons are a pair of twin-linked Magna Las Cannons, devastating weapons in order of magnitude more powerful than even the Solix pattern heavy Las Cannons of the Mechanicum Tagmata. Where a Knight Paladin may carry a heavy stubborn as a secondary weapon, the Porphyron is armed with a pair of auto cannons, which are often replaced with las cannons when additional anti-armored firepower is necessary. Its Iron Storm missile pods have a substantially larger payload than those found on more common knights. Though in battle zones where the dangers from airborne assault is apparent, this system can be replaced with a powerful Helios defense missile system. And those were 40 facts on the Acastus Knight Porphyron. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. If I didn't comment down below, uh, let me know how you're supposed to pronounce it. Um, now, the knight itself is, is absolutely amazing. What more can you say? Um, to actually own one of these and field it on the battlefield would be amazing. 
Um, for the longest time, I wanted to uh, field something this massive, but I was always prevented by the fact that whenever we did play a game, it was usually a small game. It was like a 1,000 or 2,000 2, point game. Um, and fielding something as massive as like a knight um, or a titan, or not a knight, a titan really, um, is impossible. And, and then secondly, I never really wanted to spend that much money on something as massive. But now um, that... I have a imperial army, and that I've been working on the Skatari, and I've been working on my Inquisitor. Um, I've I've been tempted to purchase something that's like big enough to actually, um, you know, be impressive on the battlefield. For the longest time, um, I played orcs, and I always wanted to buy the Forge World. Um, I think they're called Mega no Me Mega Death Dreads, uh, just these massive, awesome um, Death Dreads on crack. Um, but I was always prevented because they were really, really pricey. Um, and then, of course, the Stampa, uh, when it went from a Forge World model to a GW model, and they actually had it in the GW store, I was so tempted to purchase it. I'm glad I didn't, because um, just recently, um, I played a 5,000-point game with a friend uh, who plays Necrons, and I decided to use my um, Mr. Potato Head Stampa. I created a Mr. Potato Head Stampa back... Uh, when I was younger, like in high school, and um, it looks awesome, I love the way it turned out, but actually playing it on the battlefield, it did horribly, um, it, it didn't do much, like, I think it killed maybe a group of lynch guard, um, and then killed a couple scarabs, but it, it was pointless, um, so the fact that I didn't purchase the stampa, I didn't drop all that money on the stampa, and instead I made my own, it, it felt good, um, but now that I'm you know, working on the Skatari and I'm working on the Inquisitor army. I've been tempted to buy something as big as a Titan, but having a knight, uh, specifically this knight, um, it, it would be pretty badass. The, the knight itself looks a lot like the, um, I think they're called Warglaives from the Forge Bane um, box set. They're just bigger, uh, bulkier, and just bigger guns. Uh, and I've always wanted to have something that kind of just sits in the background and just shoots. The Stampa was not the best thing for that. Uh, the Stampa actually never went into close combat when I played that game. Um, so maybe that's a reason why it did so bad. Um, but I, I wouldn't want that. I would want something like the Acastus Knight Porphyrion just in the background shooting and destroying. Um, uh, I think they're called Scythes or whatever for the, the Necrons. Um, but we'll see depending on uh, the price and depending on... Um, uh, how much I want to drop on this uh, this model uh, awesome model the lore for it is pretty cool the fact that it's a rare um, thing uh, adds to the to the desire uh, it would be cool to have like my inquisitor come across this night somehow um, and, and like bring it back from the from the dark dark age of uh, or sorry from the dark or the great crusade um, he found it rebuilt it and now he's fighting for the inquisitor that would be pretty awesome to my lore uh, but again we'll see how it goes if you guys have played against a porfarion knight or if you guys have played with the akestus knight um what would what, what do you what do you think is it worth the money uh to drop on this massive um creature uh, and then of course is it how hard is the build i don't think it would be that hard of a build it doesn't look like a too hard of a build um but that's a little um, extra thing, too, that I have to think about because it is uh, time-consuming. If you guys have not uh, sub or followed us on Instagram yet, please do so. I've been working on my army a lot more, and I know a lot of you guys have been commenting in the past about how I don't create a um, showcase video of, of my army. Um, and I, I am showcasing all of my working progress on... Uh, Instagram so I post stories on there so go follow us on Instagram and I'm, I'm updating that every single day now so I work on a, at least one model every single day so if you guys want to get um, daily updates as to what how my Skatari army is doing or how my orcs are doing uh, subscribe to our um, Instagram or follow us on Instagram now if you guys enjoyed these videos don't forget to comment down below and give us another suggestion. This was a viewer uh, suggestion. We read those comments every single day and we base our videos based off of your suggestions. So the more suggestions you give us, the more content that you like will, that will show up on the actual channel. Um, 
with that said, we also are switching up our schedule. Uh, we're not posting every day now. We're posting every 12 hours. Uh, recently, I traveled to Europe, and I realized that the time difference is a big... It's, it, it, it's very effective as far as like how you watch the videos because I was over there and I scheduled some some videos and I would see that they would post but it would be on awkward times um, especially even here because we're in Chicago so we're central time and we realized that posting at midnight is probably not the best thing we're not gonna get rid of that we're, what we're doing now is posting 12 p.m. 12 a.m. so you're never too far from one of our videos and I really hope you guys enjoy this new upload schedule it's more content for you guys and um, just keeps you more motivated to to keep playing Warhammer 40k if you're constantly being um, reminded of the epicness of the the lore of Warhammer 40k so I, I hope you guys enjoy that if you like our videos don't forget to support us on patreon it's a simple dollar a month it helps us create more videos um, because of your support on patreon and because you guys are commenting um, liking subscribing doing all that that you do uh, we've been able to update the, the schedule and post every 12 hours and give you guys more content so thank you for that uh, and if you can't support us on patreon just by watching our videos you're doing a lot of work so thank you for that now one last question i want to ask you guys the necrons have um a new like colossal um it's like a it's like a tentacle like uh, I don't know construct thing um, if you guys have any news on that as far as when it's gonna come out or anything like that please comment down below or send me a link to uh, any information as far as when Forge World is gonna come out with that Necron um, I think it's a it's a heavy um, so if you guys have any information on that please send that our way one of our friends the Necron players constantly is asking and we haven't found any information on that awesome um, new new unit that's coming out for the necron so if you can please send that our way it would be a lot of help but with that said guys i will talk to you tomorrow this was gersh one with one mind syndicate signing out